Hello there, my name is uh, Kelly Harlton. I'm here with uh, two really good friends, uh, my guru uh, Morris Kohansky and uh, one of my other tutors, um, Randy Brujma here. We're at uh, the site where we do our Caramat courses. Um, today I'd like to do a little uh, uh, video with some help from these guys on, uh, on uh, Don Cavellos' uh, bush cooker. Uh, something he'd come up with a, a few years ago. Uh, very efficient little cooker and uh, just over the years I'm probably one of the guys that have used it more than others and so I just want to show some tips and tricks on uh, how to get some uh, maximum maximum efficiency out of these things. You know you hear the odd uh, person complain about um, about uh, you know using the stove and you can rest assured that it's not the stove it's them and it's just the, some of the different ways you can utilize them so um, having said that I'm just gonna jump jump right into it. They're, they're a very easy efficient rig to use. The biggest difference I'm going to do today is I'm going to, I, I've learned to prefer a top light system rather than building a little fire and building it, building it from the bottom upwards. Um, I'm, I'm going to fill it full of material and, and do a top light. Now in terms of material, it's pretty surprising. It's all about, it's, it should, I should say it's not surprising. It's all about sort of the mass that you have, right? So, so a, a solid mass of wood like that will burn first, it will uh, melt a pot of snow, bring it to a boil and give you cooking coals for 15 or 20 minutes with no maintenance. So that, that idea of this is to show you how to use the stove very conveniently. So when you're talking about this mass, there's lots of ways you can do that. You can of course fill it with masses of, uh, a good mass of twigs. Or maybe you can put in five or six of these. Or maybe we can put three of these. Or we could put just two of these. Or I in fact could take this and with my baton, I'll split it in four and make a little mini stump stove. And you can see it's close to the inside diameter of the, of the stove. So that, that amount of mass there gives you a lot of heat energy and it's uh, pretty easy to collect. Other things we can use, um, just if you have no tools, you wanna collect things quickly, dry, punky wood burns awesome those things. It burns a little bit fast, but it's so easy to manage in the hands. Very, very fast to collect, very easy to use. The thing that burns awesomely well in this, I learned uh, years ago from more, is that this makes some of the best coals going in, in, this, uh, in this environment. Uh, and it also works excellent in these small stoves. And the beauty of this stuff is it's really extraordinarily easy to manage with simple tools. It breaks easy in the hands. You can break it up into chunks very it's, easily. It's the bark off of a tree that the wood is just absolutely hopeless. And yet the bark has these right. unique properties of glowing so beautifully. Yeah. I guess we should say what it is. So, so it's almost indispensable to, if you're making a pizza in the bush, you, you can actually pull it off if you've got that as fuel. <laughs> it's a bark off our uh, balsam poplar, but I suppose any cottonwood, any of the uh, dry... Any thick bark probably. Yeah, yeah. Any, any corky thick bark will glow uh, in a special way. As opposed to oak <laughs> or <laughs> <laughs> so collecting materials again when you're using little twigs you find the wood that's nice and dry and the right consistency but four fingers long tends to be a nice uh, formula for length of material to use in the bush cooker so easily collected with uh, uh, by hand and then if you kind of go to the next size this is pretty typical of size of when I when I stop in the bush and I want to make a pot of tea I look for a dead branch or a dead sapling or a piece of wood about that big and that's enough that's enough heat energy there to easily uh, boil water and cook a meal and everything so lots of different ways we can process this of course if you've got an axe no no big deal we can uh, chop chunks off with an axe if uh, you have a saw lots of safe ways to handle the material we clamp it in our leg like this and hold it like this. It's sort of a, if you get right down on one knee, it's actually called a plumber's vise. So a nice, secure way to cut your material here. In a matter of mere minutes, you have the material to cook and boil water. If you have the other style of saw, a bow saw, a nice convenient way to work is simply you can either put this up against the trunk of a tree or a stump or you can use a little bit of a cockamamie stance with your foot and brace it thusly and a nice way to cut wood so five or six of these
And that's all the material cutting I have to do. You want to see that cute little technique demonstrated with a with an arbor saw. I've come up with this technique. Just again using creativity. You need to go this way between your legs. <laughs> Level patch of ground. There we go. Sometimes it's a little bit of ice here. I have to show you a picture out of one of Lars fault books on on uh, <laughs> He's got some creative things like that going on too. <laughs> creative methods of, uh, uh, you have a, a wire saw put on a branch and you got a loop in the wire and as you, you pump with your foot. Oh. <laughs> Just like a, <laughs> okay, uh, perfect. Like a, 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 a band saw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Automated a little bit, eh? So I'm taking the chunks and I'm gonna just actually fill them in. Here you want it, if you want the, uh, to get the capacity of your uh, bush cooker. This is the latest version Don's made. Um, so it's got a little bigger firebox. So I'm going to cut a couple more pieces, but you see the the height is such that it's uh, it's not impeding the top sets of holes. So I'm going to cut just a couple more. Uh, it, other it, ways. Oh, look at this. In comparison, bit. you can see that you can go quite <laughs> small too. Yeah. <laughs> Some little gaffers. Um, if we just have a knife. Uh, other options for this size of material, of course, is we can simply bat baton our way through very, very easily. A couple of taps. Lots of simple ways to do this. Or I, notice, I notice there's no cones. No Some cones. cones work good too for your fuel. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Spruce cones, pine cones, yeah. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of things you can burn, a, a myriad of different uh, fine twigs and, and uh, even in some cases forest debris and in some cases even uh, dung. But uh, what I'm shooting here for is uh, a good amount of uh, thermal uh, or a good amount of mass that's going to create the amount of heat you want. An another technique for cutting your pieces, the way to cut a stick, you're just going to go around a couple times. Yeah, you could. I suppose you could go to a place where a beaver has been busy. And Break oh, up a, beautiful, beautiful a stuff! A gunny right? sack full of uh, <laughs> of beaver chips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mix them with moose chips and beaver chips. Yeah. So this is one way. Size of the stick. The bigger the stick, the more times you go around. So a stick this big, I'm going to go around twice or even three times. Lots of convenient ways to collect material. Or if we want to use one of our more powerful cuts. I'm going to use this uh, use the chest and back muscles. Now you realize too that uh, if you're in uh, the Arctic, this particular stove also works well with seal seal fat. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's extraordinarily versatile. Um, uh, we burn alcohol in it, and burn uh, those solid uh, fuel bits. Um, and yeah, I suppose, why, why wouldn't you, can you burn fats and things? So this is a very, very powerful cut I'm doing here. So here's a, here I've sectioned off a bunch of fuel. No big deal. So what I want to end up with is basically almost a solid mass of wood. Now to light this, lots of different ways we can light this. So there's a little bit of room, a little bit of space, it's not packed solid, and that's on purpose because we need a little bit of air uh, between them, but also we want to be able to put something between them to uh, augment the lighting procedure, make it easy. So lots of things we can use. One of my favorites, simple uh, glob of resin, especially uh, striated with bark. We just simply put that in the middle of the mass and actually light it and it drips down in between flaming napalm and it's a very a nice way to get your stove going, but the only caveat to that is you want to let a lot of the sap have burnt away because it tends to gum up the bottom of your pot, but that's probably the slickest way to light it. And then of course there's lots of things we can use. We can use twigs. Favorite always being of course birch bark, because I can shove it right down in between the right in between the uh, pieces of wood. 
just sort of folding it and stuffing it down on the cracks in a couple places. So my goal here is to get it sort of a little bit wedged in so that when I turn it upside down, the stuff doesn't fall out. So I'll put another piece in there and that's on purpose. So what I find is if you sort of get the stuff sort of wedged in there, then I can actually light it upside down and manage it and get it burning properly. And it gets, uh, seems to do a better job of igniting our material. So now without worry of the wood falling out, you got a little bit of a wind here yeah, to play with. Protect it from the wind because it's not for long though. Starts off as my enemy and yeah. it's going to be my friend here in a minute, eh? <laughs> like, a, like a lot of the things in the bush. So now I can virtually hold it upside down and get the flame burning now, the right direction. Now that, uh, now that you've got that piece of resin in there. I didn't put the resin well, in. Well, you didn't, because I thought you left the piece in. I was gonna, but it, I, I find if it gums do, up. If you do, you better watch out. <laughs> don't, don't cup your hands yeah. and catch the drips. <laughs> I'm manipulating the pot to get it started equal, but also so I don't burn my hand if my uh, bush cooker starts getting a little warm. About the time it starts to get hot, we can set it down. It's probably established. Pretty good. Also with the kit, John gives you a, uh, windscreen. a windscreen, yeah, which really uh, yeah, increases yeah. the efficiency of these puppies. So. Takes away the effect of the wind. So at first, if you're using birch bark, you see that black soot, don't, don't be in a rush to put your pot on because it, it'll over soot your pot and it'll soot up your handles and that. So when you see that black smoke going away, well, likely... You, you do that You do that when your pot is brand new, shiny. Oh yeah, yeah. to expedite, to expedite uh, getting your pot blackened. Yeah. When I saw this fired up the first time, because I had uh, just previously the year before, I tried to write an article on the physics and chemistry of combustion. And so what you find, the important points about combustion is uh, having the right amount of fuel to the air. So you find that uh, uh, things that burn, uh, in a stove you're controlling the access of the oxygen into the stove. When you build a fire in the middle of nowhere, you're controlling the fire by the thickness of the sticks you use. So you have to have a different mindset. But when you look at this construction here, you'll see something that looks like uh, a fan. Well, when combustion goes on, there's the evolution of the uh, volatile materials that are actually what produces the flame and does the work for you. And if you get too much oxygen that uh, uh, subdues the flame and if you get too much um, fuel evolving that subdues the flame. So you want to try to get the right amount of air to the right amount of volatilized material. And what you find that in the, uh, in the combustion process there's a lot of heating going on which cooks off the materials out of your fuel, which turn into what we call, you know, virtually a gas. And a lot of that smothers itself. So what you need is something that stirs up uh, and, and that generally the evolution of, uh, of these combustibles, uh, an awful lot is going up with the smoke and everything. And what you need is a secondary burn and you need uh, turbulence. So this is what these, this device tries to create. Uh, all these complex things. So you find you've got certain holes that let in the right amount of oxygen and this has to sit on something that prevents you can't have it sitting up in the air with this all totally open. There's that de device there. He, he put a permanent bottom to it so that you pretty well create a, uh, a fixed um, access of air. <coughs> then as all that burns, uh, preheating occurs because there's a double wall in there and you see little holes on the outside 
and you'll see uh, that uh, uh, as the uh, uh, fuel burns that it looks like there's almost like alcohol inside there and so on. Anyway, I, I don't know if uh, how many of you have ever seen that movie uh, Quest for Fire where this individual sees uh, this girl lighting fire with uh, and he's looking the, the whole idea is trying to per, uh, uh, portray exactly how uh, fixated and how impressed he is to see fire generated by friction. Well, when I saw that device working properly and everything, I pretty well felt the same way. <laughs> I could uh, hardly believe what I was looking at because it was uh, uh, displaying so effectively the whole issue of combustion that the tweaking <coughs> of this setup uh, it's an unbelievable amount of, of effort and thought has gone into that and if you understand certain things uh, this uh, works like uh, it's almost miraculous but then in the hands of an idiot it doesn't work very well <laughs> like most things uh, there's like an awful things. lot of people that say oh it's not so good because we're always going to turn on the knob and everything <laughs> they, uh, because they don't have any insight and they expect everything to just light the fire and it works by itself. They, uh, and then they, then they uh, accuse you for producing a product <laughs> that doesn't work very well. <laughs> There's no accounting for, for, you know, for ignorance and, uh, and the lack of, uh, of insight or training to understand uh, what's going on. Uh, I think Don Cavellis has been working on this device for quite a few years. It started out with a Boy Scout activity. It looks something like that, using two uh, paint sizes of paint cans. Uh, when I one time when I was discussing this with Don, he says, "Let's go for a walk in the supermarket." And he pointed out to me all the different type of canned vegetables and things you get to create this device. Uh, in his case, the, these are made out of titanium, which is the leftover materials after. Uh, he's finished putting together his titanium stoves. Well, this is uh, um, um, what do you call it? A kind of a, a unique, expensive material, and it's a real shame that the leftover material would have to go back to recycling without it being converted into stuff like this. Uh, it's costly, but it's a once-in-a-lifetime situation. So once you have bought. Uh, so here's the small version of what's got there and the, and the shield <laughs> and it's meant to fit in my... I should fire that little guy up see how he runs it. <laughs> and, and, and so we got the bigger pot. So we got this, 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 this. It's all very compact so I, I, I can't see why people aren't breaking down the door and everything uh, to uh, acquire one of these is a camping device because if you're dead set uh, getting away from uh, you know petrochemicals the amount of uh, volatile fuels derived from oil wells and so on for campers we once made an analysis it's like in the millions and millions of gallons that the backpacking fraternity might burn and it's a shame they don't learn how to use stuff like this to do their cooking and everything uh, well, rather well, than yeah. uh, uh, you know tapping into the scarce resources. The baby honk, eh? Rolling boil, that didn't take too long. Um, yeah, exactly, and uh, plus it'll take alcohol and plus it'll, it'll take, take um, uh, yeah. the solid fuel so yeah. really you can it'll, use it either way. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, olive oil, seal oil, cooking yeah, oil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you might, uh, you know, find it uh, uh, lard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, any kind of that. Eh? <laughs> Crisco. Yeah. Uh, anything like that in a pinch. They say that uh, 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 one of the causes of. Uh, uh, of uh, What's the, what's the the fellow who perished trying to get to the South Pole? Uh, oh, um. uh, anyway. oh, 
<laughs> What's that? I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> It'll come to me yeah. in a moment. But uh, they, they, um, uh, they brought um, uh, uh, a type of uh, camping stove. And the camping stove was prone for the, the little orifices involved in whatever prones to clog. And they didn't bring the little wires wow. to clear the clogs. <laughs> and they, they, they were really hampered by that on account of the fact that uh, they just couldn't uh, boil enough water, do stuff. And yet they had tons and tons of pemmican that could be rendered oh, down and they could have used it hard, to yeah. supplement for <laughs> cooking and everything. And they perished on account of them not being uh, inventive enough to realize, hey, you know, uh, since our stoves are failing here because we, we neglected to bring the, <laughs> the, the, the prickers, uh, they, they didn't have enough uh, inventiveness to realize that they could have done all their cooking with the fat that they could have rendered out of all the pemmican that was left over. Yeah. They, they brought 10 times more pemmican than they could ever use. Scott, Scott for oh, stupidity, <laughs> uh, Shackleton for survival. It, uh, but generally, uh, uh, this type of device now makes everything so proficient. Well, Don also says that just as a matter of uh, uh, convenience, you fill it full of fuel, you light it, it brings your water to a boil, and then uh, not too long after the water's boiling, it, it goes to a, a nice simmer, and then it gives you a 15, 20 minute simmer, which is about what you need for most meals you cook. That's exactly, you always bring your water to boil, adding some ingredients and then and some simmer time. And then if you need to increase your simmer time, <laughs> you yeah, simply drop in one plug and it probably takes you to the rest of your... Uh, yeah, so you need, you need some pretty, br uh, really hot initial and then you ne need it to slow down. The other thing probably that can really make a difference <coughs> is whether the outside of your pot is black or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my literature says that that if you have a, a black outside, for sure, I don't know about the inside, but the black outside, that you can actually bring everything to boil almost in half the amount of fuel, which uh, seems to be, you know, like many things in the, that goes through the minds of outdoors campers and backpackers. Uh, why do they always do everything opposite? <laughs> when they buy a new pot, they want it to be shiny, and they bring the the, the scrubbers and everything so that the outside of the pot will be shiny clean because what bothers them is the, you know, without a bag to keep the, uh, that, you know, the coating on the outside right, of your right, pot gets right. everything. So they want it shiny and then they have to carry twice as much fuel <laughs> to do all their cooking.